Coming up on LiveWire, we've got a great show for you today. We've been talking with Scott Taylor, who is from the R25 Theater Company, and we're going to be talking about uh, how the arts in uh, Sacramento are really rising to the occasion, coming up after all of this time with new plays and all kinds of interesting inter, uh, arts uh, events. So stay tuned for LiveWire right after this. With me in the studio is Scott Taylor. He is from the California... The R25 R20, Theater Group. R25 Theater Group. It's hard to get out of my... <laughs> because the overall organization there is called California Stage or R25. Right, exactly. It's got two names. And that kind of reflects some of how things are progressing uh, at the facility. You know, there's a, a lot of performing arts groups that use the R25 Arts Complex. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Frankly, the, the R25 Theater Group is a new one. It's a <laughs> we're new just, one. Correct. We're just getting stood up. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, groups such as uh, Resurrection, uh, Resurrection Theater Company and Ovation and the Actors Theater of Sacramento oh, yes. and California Stage, which mm -hmm. is a terrific production group, uh, along with lots of other people who take advantage of the, perform uh, the uh, rehearsal spaces and whatnot. So pretty much everybody who's anybody in, in community theater in Sacramento has, has, has performed or used the R25 theater complex. And it's a complex, so there are how many? What, what's it? Well, there's, there's three different stages. Um, there's a black box called the Three Penny. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a theater known as the Wilkerson, mm -hmm. which is um, not a black box. And probably seats, if I had to guess, I'd say probably 45 or 50. Mm -hmm. And then there's the California stage, which is a large stage that has a big amount of floor space. Actually, it might be the largest stage in Sacramento, oh, other yeah. than maybe the Very music big. circus. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's a lot of space. Uh -huh. uh, and it seats upwards of 130, I think. Well, I've seen large musicals with lots of people on that <laughs> stage before. <laughs> Right, and uh, so so with the between the three sizes of the stages, plus some uh, some of the not offices, but there are rooms that can be used for rehearsals. There's lots of uh, uh, arts instruction going on. I know mm -hmm. there's some theater instruction that goes on in there with teachers mm -hmm. uh, and groups that meet, and then of course there's the, the poetry center and um, some arts. I the think a couple of art studios, yeah. Sacramento Poetry Center. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, exactly. So it's a it's a very live, vibrant facility that is, um, I think, kind of coming coming out of the the COVID torpor, along with the rest of Sacramento hey, theater. Hey, right amen. Now. Oh, I can say that. <clears throat> and that sounds like a really wonderful thing that is happening. They're kind of roaring with. Uh, plays and poetry and all of that well are there any summer events in fact there are the um there is a something called the the month of sundays uh music program that's going to be coming up uh starting i believe in august mm -hmm. and there's going to be uh every sunday there's going to be a, a band performing i believe at seven o'clock uh-huh uh, if you buy a ticket, you get a Sunday. <laughs> oh, I see. It's on the screen there. Oh, there we go. See, Month of Sundays. The, the wonder, the magic of television. <laughs> and you get a Sunday with uh, with your ticket. With a, you get a Sunday with your ticket. <laughs> I think the the first group is to perform is uh, uh, Dargan. Darden, which is which is a uh, they they performed out of L.A. and in Europe. And I don't mm -hmm. know if we've seen them a lot in Sacramento, but they should be very interesting. Kind of rock rockabilly. Could be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there will be the next Sunday will be a group called Proxy Moon, mm -hmm. which should be a lot of fun. And there's uh, an accordion in the band and some guitars. Oh, it's a local a horn. group. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot going on with them. And then uh, two groups to be announced. Okay. 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 Now, these are the groups. So this must be Proxy Moon. 
that yes that is proxy moon and let's face it anytime you've got a scrub board uh as a as a piece of music you're 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 in good company you know they're not doing tchaikovsky <laughs> exactly and that'll be and, and and this is all taking place outside in the r25 there's a little outdoor stage that's been set up is this it um yes that's that is it uh and you can see that so it's an elevated space the audience is able to space you know kind of have a little uh a little COVID spacing, so yeah. nobody feels too uh, encumbered. Uh -huh. uh, all the seats are good, and it's. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. If you yeah. haven't had a chance to see it, I I encourage you. They've all, they've used that space for other things like radio plays before too. So, radio, radio. Oh yes, yes. There's the Third Age on Stage Radio Group <laughs> that does uh, murder mysteries from the late '40s, early '50s. Wow. Um, we've got a couple coming up this year, in fact. Um, oh, here's, uh, is that the murder mystery? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the band again, right? That's the band. They're much more alive than the, the victim in the murder mystery. Do we have any pictures of the Darden group, you said? I, I don't, don't know. know. The Darden group sounds like uh, rock, rock. That's my understanding. Yeah. Um, oh, a, there they are. Yeah. That's a picture. I've seen it. Darden. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, it says Darden on the on the on the drum. See it? Yeah, oh, it does. Is that what it, it? says? Yes. There know. we go. Oh, there we go. Tough guys. Whoa. Oh well, you know they're they're out of L.A. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you yeah, have, that really looks like out of L.A. That a, should look like out of flavor. Oklahoma. <laughs> you have to have a certain flavor. Oh, tough guys. <laughs> but they should be pretty good. They apparently have a pretty good following. Yeah. In yeah. LA and they've toured, they've, they've performed in Europe and done some touring, I guess. So, wow. you know, they should be a lot of fun. Good, good, good. Well, we'll have a look at them and uh, we'll do that. So uh, tell me more about the radio drama. So the radio dramas this year, uh, last, last year we did a couple of um, murder, uh, a couple of performances of the radio dramas from the Candy Matson series so the, apparently candy matson was a radio uh program that ran in the late 40s mm -hmm. early 50s uh -huh. what's a, it about so candy matson is a female private eye oh, in san francisco in the 1950s in the 1950s you know who uh and it's it's kind of a, it it very much is is of that time so mm -hmm. she's you know the tough tucking kind of gal yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff and they're a lot of fun um, so last year we did a couple this year, we're doing two. The first one is called the Egyptian amulet, Ooh. which is uh, a little mystery surrounding a piece of jewelry that mm -hmm. seems to have a lot of, uh, people going after it. And then the second one is, uh, <laughs> a Christmas theme murder mystery called Jack Frost, <laughs> Jack Frost, Jack Frost. So we're doing those, um, there are Three performances over two days. So July 31st, uh -huh. which is a Sunday, there'll be a two o'clock matinee. And on August 6th, which is a Saturday, there'll be a 2 p.m. matinee and a 5 p.m. performance. Those performances, in fact, will be taped. Um, I see. Because they, theoretically, these are radio dramas. Radio and we drama. try to do the Foley art, the old Foley effects where, you know, you know footsteps on the ground no, and, no. and, you know, yeah. Thump sounds oh. and all that other kind and of fights. stuff. Fights. Fights, that's and right. And all the actors you know. make the sounds. That's right. All the <laughs> actors make the sounds. Or at least we try to make as many as we can. Some sounds, you know, it's it's tough to be a, a car in the background. <laughs> so yeah. we may, we may, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or, or we may tape some of them. <laughs> I see. But in any event, they should be a lot of fun. There's two of them in the, in the performance. Uh -huh. So, and they run like, you know, 26, 27 minutes mm -hmm. um, each. And then we'll have, uh, and, and the group that does this is called Third Age on Stage. Yes. And they are all um, uh, senior or retired actors. 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 Oh, yeah. So, yes. so that's something for and, them and, to and do. And that's something for them to do. And um, and this year, we uh, some of the, the old hands from the group in prior performances mm -hmm. have come back. We have some new people, um, although they are also still seniors. You can seniors. name some of them if you want. Oh, gosh. I like right. People like to, to watch their names go so, by. That's right. Okay, so Candy Matson this year will be played by Linda Taylor. 
Mm-hmm. And yes, she's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's... Uh, sure, yeah, I get that. <laughs> but uh, uh, Richard Winters will play the the Inspector Mallard of Ooh. the San Francisco Police Department. He and he and Candy have a little a little history, and then um, I will play uh, Rembrandt Watson, who is Candy's uh, photographer sidekick. Oh, okay. And um, you know it's interesting because when those were written, there were some there were some ideas about well you know. Rembrandt Watson, they're going to, you know, there were like some old, old ideas that are no longer uh, quite about gay characters. That's on right. Tele- that's television. right. A little, a little, about that's it. right. We talked about that. And so we've just, I mean, we're not going to do that. That's like, I'm sorry. That's no longer appropriate. Yeah, yeah. But we will. So the choice I made as an actor is um, I've decided that, that Rembrandt is, um, a little plummy. He's a British fellow, you know. Oh, I see. And so if you want to imagine that somehow that's, you know, less than tough guy masculine, that's up to you. But we kind of made a decision not to not to play up some kind of obvious stereotype, no yeah. longer well, we have a tough appropriate. Chick and a, that's and right. An you know. Guy. And exactly. And you still get that contrast. Uh-huh. And from a radio perspective, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. And I'm a ham, so I like doing British accents. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> This is good, good, good. Well, you look like you got a, a really good team going there. Uh, I think we have some great talent, um, and it, we're going to have. Uh, I think the scripts are pretty solid. Mm-hmm. They're they're they they've been tweaked ever so slightly to perhaps better reflect San Francisco. So you know maybe they're not going to go to the Rose Bowl. They're going to have tickets to the ballet. Okay, <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Things like that. You know. But it's um. It's a lot of fun, and yeah. we think, uh, and in fact, the R25 Theater Group uh-huh. thinks that there's, frankly, a lot of future yeah. in radio drama and radio plays. The fact is that technically, um, they're a little easier and a little more affordable to put up than a full-length play. Um, they're not quite as demanding on the actors, uh, in terms of time commitment, you can mm-hmm. you can put one up in a couple of weeks yep. versus you know six putting one up six weeks night, right nights and things right like that. right all of that um, and now with the you know radio itself is not necessarily where they happen but you know podcasts and yeah. things like that so we think that there's a lot of opportunity new markets new markets an opportunity to put stuff out there that people will enjoy because the, the, the theater of the mind is, you know, there's a reason that's why that's the that name stuff, of the program. That's theater right. The yeah. Never mind. There's a reason why that stuff was popular back sure. in the, in the heyday of radio. And there's no reason to think it can't be again. There's always been since uh, the 1950s, a kind of, uh, when, you know, the radio television came in radio sometimes gets lifted up into, um, you know, a nice performance mode i can remember driving back from berkeley in the 60s listening to old time radio uh from berkeley to los angeles uh, and some large powerful uh, uh radio outfit was putting it on so i could listen to it all the way from berkeley to los angeles oh yeah absolutely and and you can now see i mean consider how popular books on tape are oh yes and you know, it's not like nobody, you know, oh, you know, people still read. But now they're, I mean, the, the, the written word is still, you know, obviously happening. But perhaps now it's being listened to as opposed to, you know, actually read, read. Yeah. But I think that there's, that in its own way reminds me of the notion of, you know, of an audio theater environment. Okay. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. We have to take a short pause for the cause. We'll be back with you, Scott. We'll talk more about these things. All right. We're taking a short pause for the cause. We'll be back with you in a minute. STEM is the discipline of hard numbers. Precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. 
Get weird with it. Dare to get messy or just mess it up. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to try, dare to fail. Dare to keep daring. Dare to learn the difference between organic, sedimentary, and non-foliated metamorphic rock. Get outside, find those rocks. Dare to be homeroom famous, a high school fable. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. And for the love of STEM, dare bigger. Dare to code, dare to invent, dare to explore, dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. We're back with Scott Taylor of the R25 Theater Group. Group. <laughs> uh, and uh, you're, uh, we are producing some shows coming up? We are. Um, like like a new theater company, uh, we are uh, you know there's there's <laughs> it's a little daunting, but we're gonna there. So we're gonna put up uh, in 2023. We have uh, our season. We uh -huh. have a season, we think, uh, and it's gonna have a. There's gonna be an April show, and there will be a. Sp a fall show. Uh huh. And you're working on a new play. Yes, they're they're both of our. So our plan is we're going to do two adult shows, mm -hmm. and concurrent with those, we are going to have a children's play running. I so see. same space, same, you know, dates. Obviously not simultaneous, but mm -hmm. the idea that that we can have two productions happening on a given stage. Uh, so in April of twenty three, we're going to have a new work called "Why Don't You Sit on My Lap," which is based on a true incident at a local school, and sort of the fallout of a, of a, of a comment that was taken, it, 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 just the drama associated with a comment made by a teacher wow. and how that all shook out. Yes. It's, um, it's, it's in, it's been read at least it's been read once. Uh, it's still in development, but we think it's got, we think it's going to be very interesting. Interesting enough. Some of the, some of the writing is being done by students who were in that classroom at the time, Whoa. which I think is a very interesting idea. Yeah, it sure is. Um, concurrent with that is going to be a, a play written by uh, Linda Taylor called Warp and Woof, Dogs in Space, <laughs> uh, which obviously for the kids, um, a spaceship of dogs discover a planet while at the same time it's being discovered by a spaceship of cats. And cats and dogs, so you know, yeah. mayhem, mayhem arises, and yet somehow there's a, a happy ending, and we're able to to find coexistence. I um, love it. You know, despite the, the 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 tribulations of canine and the SS sausage. That's just great. great. Well, that's children <laughs> children's theater. That's good. Sound very uh, uh, should, imaginative. Should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. Um, in the fall, we're doing an adaptation of Northanger Abbey. Mm -hmm. uh, an original script that's also in development mm -hmm. um, by a, a woman who has a strong Jane Austen background, mm -hmm. uh, wow. has done a lot of costuming locally, has in fact written plays in the past that have done well. 
Um, and so we're very excited so about... So you have a really group of old-time theater people working We with do, you. we do. Um, yes, yeah, some of these people have... Yes, exactly. Uh, in, in conjunction with that show, the children's show that will run concurrently in the fall of 23 is a one-hour adaptation of Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, this, this script has been... Uh, was originally produced in 1995 mm -hmm. by the, T, the now gone T Street Players. Oh, yes. Uh, gone but not forgotten. It won the Ellie for Best Adapted Script. So we think, we think it is the time is right for a revival of the one-hour production of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream that's oriented to children. And you know it's for the kids because back when it was originally done, the changeling, if you remember the, the storyline, yes. uh, the changeling was a Tickle Me Elmo doll. Oh. So, <laughs> so we're not sure what it's going to be this year, but it'll be something fun. <laughs> and we, we think it's, it's a lineup that's, um, that's achievable for our group, that's got a lot of entertainment value. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, has some things to say there's some relevance to those scripts True. and some things that can be taken and and we're pretty excited uh even though the fact that yes yeah, since they're all new scripts it's um you know we, ha we all have enough experience to be mindful of like okay there's a certain leap of faith when you put up a new script but we're excited we we are confident these are going to be pretty darn terrific Good. and it sounds like the group itself is a group of people who have done a lot of work on the stage and uh, and in and around <clears throat> the directing, uh, absolutely very experienced. Um, our uh, the group's president is Richard Winters, mm -hmm. who uh, was a uh, is now a retired high school drama teacher. But in addition, he's an equity actor and yeah. basically became a high school drama teacher when he realized that I have a family. <laughs> perhaps right. perhaps trying to be a struggling actor you know, is not necessarily the way to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also in the group is Michelle Kohler, Kohler. who is also a retired uh, drama teacher mm -hmm. uh, from the public school system. And she has a strong interest in children's theater. So we're very excited to have her involved. Um, a fellow named Lester Horn, mm -hmm. uh, who has a strong background in technical theater and you know, building and things. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that's a great addition. Uh, one of our board members is um, my wife, Linda Taylor, who is a, uh, a very, very, very skilled and experienced costumer. Mm -hmm. She just uh, costumed the Chautauqua production of uh, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> and so made, you know, 17 different original, you know, outfits for, um, pure all waist the frills and, and everything and, and oh yes the costumes were fabulous and the coats for the men and military jackets for the the officers that were all there no it's so we think that there's and everybody in that group has directed um including myself and you know we all kind of bring our own skill sets yep. um and so we're we're excited we think it's we think that this is going to be a really we're excited for the opportunity. I don't, I'm, I'm reluctant to brag because I know there's many a slip twixt cup and lip, but I am confident that we're going to have a pretty terrific, pretty uh, terrific operation. We, we're excited. We're looking forward to the opportunity to kind of expand the arts for everybody here in Sacramento and yeah. to bring in some additional voices and opportunities for actors. And all of these things are happening at this R25. R25 yeah. arts complex. And that's like a, Sacramento has got... <laughs> numbered and lettered streets. That's right, I that's found, right. It's, found fascinating when I first came It's here. the grid. <laughs> so it's at RN25. RN25, right? 25th Street. Old that's factory exactly. building. Oh, yeah. It's, um, yeah, in the great tradition of, of semi-underground theater, <laughs> it can be described as funky. <laughs> funky. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. But, but, but the space, creatively funky. Yes, but the spaces work terrifically. And there's plenty of parking. Um it's, you know, the fact is it's a mixed use neighborhood, but there's plenty of residential. Um, I live in the neighborhood. I walk around at night all the time. It's, yeah, I think, I think if you haven't been there before, I would encourage anyone to come out and check it out. There's a lot, there's a lot of theater groups that are performing out of those spaces. It's a good facility. Um, 
And frankly, it's desperately needed because yeah. Sacramento does not have a lot of performance spaces. Yeah. There's this band that you're going to see here. That's oh. what the coast see. That's right. That's um, I believe that's Prox that's Proxy, Proxy Moon. Moon. Yeah. That looks like a lot of fun. And Pat Grizzell on the right. There's our leader, his leader. But I've seen all of those people before, and they're wonderful. Oh, good. I'm 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 looking forward to it. Um, well, that's the program. A month of Sundays. Yep. So come come for the show. Enjoy the Sunday while you're there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll enjoy the Sunday while you're there. Yeah, and, look. and and look for the radio dramas. Exactly right. Well, I think there'll be more information there on the radio dramas too, right? That's, that's coming up too. Yes. What that's, are the dates for that? So the performances are um, July 31st. That's a Sunday at 2 o'clock. Uh -huh. We will have a performance. And then the following Saturday... There will be two performances. That's August 6th. August 6th, thank you. Um, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. matinee, and a 5 o'clock p.m. performance. Mm -hmm. And those performances will be recorded. So right. we'll, have, we'll have all the, uh, the, rec the, the, the recording equipment and the, the sound engineer, and, and that'll, that should be and a Candy lot of Mattson fun. Candy Matson doing her thing. Candy Matson doing her thing. Wow. You know? Well, do you enjoy, you really enjoy your life in the theater, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, this has really been a blessing. I mean, COVID, I just retired from my, my day job uh, a couple of years ago. And COVID was quite challenging, yeah. you know, because I thought, well, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be doing theater. And, you know, we went about a year and a half there without any of it. But now it's all coming back. Good. All the companies are coming back. I like hearing that. Thank you so much for being with me. It was my pleasure, Ray. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. Thank you, Scott Taylor. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. We're going to be back next Wednesday with more art in Sacramento. Watch Live Wire every Wednesday at 5, live at 5.